Hello, and welcome to another fantastic game of War Stories. Uh, we are here with the Baggy Pants Devils in the midst of Operation Husky, the Allied invasion of Sicily. In Italy, it's a hot and muggy July, 1943, as our heroes have successfully landed a bit north of Gela, securing the Ponte Olivo airfield with a little bit of help from the 1st Infantry Division. And our heroes, taking a bit of a respite after the loss of a couple of their close uh, brothers in arms, took the battalion's dog tags for all of those who had been lost. Further south, down to the uh, G1, the uh, administration shop, if you will, for the 82nd Airborne Division, who they're part of. It was here that they were able to uh, refit, rearm, collect a good amount of uh, food for the troops and ammunition as well. And they also ran into a couple of notable faces, uh, probably chief, most chiefly among them is going to be General Patton himself, uh, old blood and guts who's busy in the process of organizing, but never has uh, a shortage of time to say hi to the lowliest enlisted ranks and give them in a, a bit of inspiration and as well as their regimental commander, Colonel Gavin, uh, who has greeted them, uh, expressed his pride in their work uh, and given them their marching orders to load up. Uh, he has commandeered the very nice Mercedes-Benz staff car that uh, the baggy pants devils managed to commandeer from the Germans, uh, but has traded in exchange for that with a GMC seven ton loaded to the brim with some fresh replacement troops to head up and uh, reinforce some of their losses, uh, as well as another GMC seven ton that is completely loaded with food and ammo and medical supplies for the boys up at the front. It is a lovely shower later when our brave heroes, clean and fresh, are ready to uh, start their drive back, uh, actually heading westward, as it's been decreed that the Americans will be making that uh, westerly push, while the British will be taking the eastern side of the island, pushing up that shoreline towards Mount Etna. General Patton has opted, however, uh, slightly unbeknownst to our heroes, that his permission, as he was granted, to conduct a reconnaissance in force, in General Patton's eyes meant, take the whole island yourself. And that's exactly what he aims to do. So now our 82nd Airborne heroes will be marching, driving, and generally pushing Jerry and his Italian allies off of Sicily, the, the Western side of Sicily. So it is here where we will pick up with our brave heroes as they are in the process currently of driving back to their unit uh, as they've pushed west uh, and are continuing along that coastline. All of you are currently in your vehicles. Private uh, Leroy Parker is driving the 7 ton with the replacements. Which vehicles are you three in on this drive back? I'm driving one of the GMCs. Okay. So uh, I imagine I'd be riding with Burke again. Okay. So we've got Boomer and Don in the GMC. And Chef, you've got the Jeep? I've got the Jeep. Yes, sir. Uh, you're kind of leading this commute as you go driving through this beautiful scenic, uh, and I use that uh, absolutely sarcastically, countryside. Uh, it looks a lot like Southern California. The hills are mostly barren, rugged scrublands. Uh, the off-road portions here look absolutely miserable. Uh, if any of you had, before you had enlisted, been so far west as Cali, you would understand that going off-road here is probably not going to end very well. But you continue your drive onwards. You are in that lead jeep, Chef. Let me get a... Uh, We'll call this a survival check. Your navigations. Uh, 
I'm going to push my luck, no ones. Okay. Uh, one success. Okay. Mm, and one, one. Hey, I'll take the food bar. All right. Picking a new food bars chart because I'm on a new page. And blah, blah. As you are uh, driving through here, there's a point where you come to a crossroads and you kind of have to look uh, based on the, the setting sun, right? Do you have a compass with you? Uh, yes, I do. I don't okay. have my character sheet with me, but I remember that I had, I think it was part of like the standard of what we had. I think okay. we had a compass, didn't we? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. So you'll be able to reference <clears throat> that. And as it kind of splits, uh, there's one road that goes um, kind of like northwest and another one is like slightly more north. Uh, but you are able to uh, kind of quickly whip out the compass as you're driving and ascertain that mm, the left is probably the way you want to go. Uh, kind of hug the coastline a little bit. Right. Driving. I'm sorry. I said, all right. OK, um, driving out here through the countryside uh, in the Jeep with you uh, is uh, one of the other enlisted men from your squad, uh, Private Becker. He's kind of uh, got his helmet in his lap for the moment. He's only 23, but Becker has, from the time you've met him, been going very prematurely bald, uh, which he tries to hide by um, just kind of shaving his head mostly. Uh, but it's a couple of days since he's had a chance to, and it's it's grown in a little bit thick. Um, you can you can definitely see the balding spot on the top. It's very shiny and reflective as you're driving. Uh, I'm gonna call him Q. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna write that down. And yeah, I'm gonna make mention of uh, he's looking a little scruffy. Uh, as you uh, you make that mention, he kind of looks over at you from the passenger seat. Like, I don't know who you're calling Scruffy, man. I mean, you've seen some better days. Okay, well, I've, obviously you guys just showered. I didn't shower, you know? You, you guys had, like, the nice mess. You guys had to sh shower in the officer's shower. Yeah, I know you didn't shower, Q. I can tell from here. Uh, okay, all right, all right. Well, uh, anyways despite that little uh, rude commentary there. I've got a little bit of a bet going. You want to get in on it? Depends on what it is. <laughs> uh, well, ah, wh oh, watch out, there's a rabbit. Whoa, dang, I think I, you almost ran over that thing. Uh, I wish I would have, that would have been dinner. <laughs> you want to loop back? I don't think they'll like that that much. Yeah, I can see them getting a little grumpy. So I got a bet, right? You gotta tell me if you want in on it first before I can tell you what it is. I'll go in on it. All right, that's the spirit. Five bucks to the guy who first gets a Luger. You know what a Luger is, the little German pistol? Of course I know what a Luger is. Okay, well, I don't mean to insult your intelligence there. Five bucks for the first guy who gets a Luger. Bet number two, the NA out, $10 on this one. I'm in all the way. Ten dollars for the first guy who gets a German dagger. I hear that they have these little nice, fancy little, you know, nice cutting daggers. All right. Ten bucks on that one. All right. Fifteen dollar bet. You win. I'm in. The first one who nets a German officer's hat. Clean. Not shot through. No blood stains. All right. Okay. And he's up to 30 bucks. You got 30 bucks? Pretty sure. I mean, we get extra pay. Of course I got 30 bucks. I'm just saying, that's almost half a month's pay. Hmm. Hey, correct me if I'm wrong. And do German officers, like, do they sometimes have, like, ceremonial swords? Are you asking the GM? Or yeah, no, I'm or asking you as a oh, okay. Oh yeah. no, no, typically no. No, they have mm -hmm. like uh, the the daggers, like the ceremonial daggers. Yeah. Those who kind of moved up through the Hitler Jugend program. 
I'm trying to think of something that's like even more rare that just seems a little bit wild. Uh, is would there be in like a coveted item like that? Um, uh, perhaps a knight's cross. This is a, a kind of prestigious award in the German military uh, for valor, combat valor. Okay, then I'll look at I'll look back back at him. I go, I got a bet for you then. Oh yeah, you in or you out? Huh? How much are we talking? You said, I said, are you in or you out? I'm in. What the heck? Because you said the ante was thirty bucks for all this, right? Yeah, five, ten, and fifteen. Well, how about we just go thirty bucks for the first one to nab an iron cross? Oh, 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 oh. oh, that's a uh, that is a high price, my friend. But I'm in. Now to clarify, to clarify. We collect the money when you get in, and the first one who finds whatever the thing is wins all the money that everybody's put in. I mean, that's we a pretty big payday. $30. I'll start asking the guys whenever we stop. But I'm, I'm down for that. I just feel like that's fair, right? That's a that's a rare item. Uh, I feel yeah, like that's it's, worth 30 bucks. I'm, I'm, I'm in for it. Shoot. I'm going to be the first one to find it, though. I'll tell you that. And I, I'll like, I'll rub my hands together. Hands on the wheel. I'll put my hands back on the wheel and I'll leave one free and I'll go. Yeah, but you see, I've got luck on my side. And then I'm going to rub his ball, the top of his bald head, like a genie lamp. <laughs> Get the heck out of here. What's, what's wrong with you rubbing my head? What are you Irish or something? I thought you were supposed to give me wishes. I'm not a genie wisecracker. You know, puts his helmet back on, sulking a little bit. It's not that bad. You almost look normal now. <laughs> ah, shut up. Kind of just sits there and sulks, looking out the side with his little bruised ego. I'll just hand him like a cigarette and have one myself, and then I'll like motion for him to light him up, and I'll just like laugh to myself. He, uh, he takes it kind of begrudgingly and just kind of like whips it out of your hand, but he does have to go back for the light, uh, which is a little bit tricky. Can I get a uh, operate check? Mm. Uh, oh, I was thinking he was going to light it for me. I was holding oh. it out for him because I don't oh, want to okay. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. Now I'm, now I'm tracking. Let me get an operate check all the same as you got to lean I over for him to uh, light one as you're driving. Uh, one success. Okay. Uh, it's a little sketch for a moment when you notice you're kind of like focused on like really getting it lit. Uh, as you kind of like pull your focus back, you see there's a pothole, which you kind of have to like swerve around to avoid. Um, those of you in the GMC will see the, the Jeep kind of make this quick swerve uh, and see a, a pothole right there. Uh, Boomer, can I get an uh, operate check from you? Yes, sir. And I'll give you, uh, you can add one to that because... Uh, Chef was able to avoid it and kind of give you the heads up that it's there. Two successes. Easy day. Uh, instead of trying to swerve around it like Chef, you just kind of saddle it and uh, let it go right underneath. Right in the middle. Let's roll for Private Parker. Well, Parker's... Oh, yeah. Because he's in the GMC behind you with the replacements. Uh, he also manages to avoid this pothole. Uh, kind of straddles it as well like you did. Uh, quickly and narrowly avoiding that. The group of you continues onward. Um, Corporal Donald's Private Burke. You guys are uh, in that middle seven ton. What's, what's the topic of discussion in this little two-seat cabin? Talking about things you want to eat. Oh. We're getting tired of these rations. You know what? I haven't had fresh corn in I can't tell you how long. You know? Oh, man, that sounds good. You know, <clears throat> I, I really want some rabbit stew. Rabbit's good eating. There's some crispy, talk down on rabbit. There's some crispy duck. Are there ducks in Italy? Can we get some ducks? Like, there's got to be some ducks in Sicily, there's, right? There's got to uh, be. There's got to be, be some everywhere. Sort of duck. 
How about some ribs? Some oh. nice barbecue ribs. I haven't seen a single cow. Maybe that's where they're hiding them. Maybe we got to get to the mainland. Man, I say, I say we go, we go hunting for some food. I, I figure we've killed, we, you know, bagged enough Germans. Let's go get some cows and ducks and rabbits. Oh, I used to hunt on the farm, man. Take my own out. I figure we can get something. I'm not much of a hunter, but if uh, if you need a cow blown up, I'm your guy. Sounds good, man. I'm sure I can hunt cows with TNT. It'll be fine. I mean, less hunting, throw, more uh, more dispersal. Throw a quarter stick under him. It, it'll be fine. As oh, yeah. <laughs> as you guys are having this conversation, uh, just almost like directly uh, overhead, you hear the propeller of a plane kind of flies by. And uh, the trail of smoke behind it leads it straight into the ground as it bursts into flames. Probably only six or seven hundred yards away from you. Uh, it had been flying pretty low and from behind you, which is why you hadn't seen it until it just mm-hmm. passed overhead. Uh, but it kind of lands with this bright explosion in the distance. It is pushing evening time, which makes it a little bit more visible. Did we see the color of the nose when it flew over us? All you saw was fire and smoke coming out of it. Uh, it was smaller, though, probably a fighter. Okay. Uh, I'll kind of stick my... I'll be like, hey, see if you see anything behind us. Yeah, can I uh, pop the head out the back, see if I see any anything coming up from behind? Yeah, make a, a perception check for me. Happily. Got a success? Just the one. Okay. You got it. Um, you look kind of out the window um, back behind you, and uh, the the first thing that catches your eye is that there is another plane that's flying, um, kind of following that same path. As he flies that. overhead and passes you. Okay. Um, does it look to be uh, friendly or German? The one that flies by overhead, uh, this one is a British airplane. You can tell by the big old circle underneath its wings. The colonizers probably taking out the Germans for us. Hey, better, better them than us. That's for sure. Uh, let me get one more perception check from the whole squad. Those I can do. Private Becker Those. will assist you, Riles, and you can add a dice to this. Fantastic. Well, three sixes, three ones, and a five. <laughs> oh, there it is. <laughs> He's one success. Okay. Um, all of you can see kind of floating down about 200 yards out as a parachute. Uh, there is a individual hanging from it, kind of slowly floating off to the left side of you uh, out in this large open field. Hmm. I, look, I look at Donald like, is that our problem? Can I... Uh... Can I see like what kind of uniform he's wearing as he's coming down? How many successes did you have? Two. Two? Um, you can see that the uh, uniform he's wearing is blue. Is blue? Mm-hmm. Um, let's say, uh, yeah, why don't we signal the stop? I think he might well, be I'll friendly. Just, I'll just like <clears throat> honk twice and then go off go off the road towards the uh, Yeah. Towards the crash. Chef, you hear the uh, honk behind you from Boomer as he uh, exits the road over towards where that parachute is landing. All right, yeah, I'll uh, I'll veer off as well, and I'll kind of get a little more out in front since I can, since I'm obviously going to be a little bit more nimble in this Jeep. You got it. Mm-hmm. Uh, let me get that operate check from you, uh, Private Riles, as you're gotcha. kind of taken. You are already in the lead, but uh, just to kind of get a little bit of a head jump. 
I'll ask Donald, was it a Jerry that you saw? They were in a blue uniform. Two successes. Okay. Easily enough, um, you're able to kind of maneuver it along where you can tell that there's been uh, rows of crops. Um, you've you've driven on farms before. You kind of know the right way to drive through a field uh, to avoid really just getting the vagadoom, vagadoom, vagadoom. Um, so using your farm boy knowledge, you're able to uh, kind of quickly get ahead of them and then drive it along the grooves um, to keep it a smooth ride. Um, as you get closer, you can see the parachute land uh, and the body kind of boom, uh, with a, a rather rough landing. Keep going. Yeah. Well, if you're towards it, and I'll be like, it's, it's for 10 points. Uh, as he uh, has landed, and you guys are pulling up here, kind of coming to a stop, the um, pilot is kind of struggling to get out of this parachute in the moment. Um, finally standing up, you can see him uh, a bit more clearly now. Uh, this blue flight suit that he's wearing, uh, kind of a a brown leather headpiece, a uh, yellow life jacket across his chest. Uh, he stands up a little bit discombobulated, struggling to get the parachute that's kind of pulling him with every little gust of wind. RAF jumpsuit. Um, this let's do this one as an insight check. Okay. Five dice, four successes. There it is. Yeah. I need to go have... buy a lottery ticket. Yeah. You got the luck tonight, man. It was against you last mm -hmm. game. Um, as he lands, uh, you can just instinctively tell. You look at him, uh, and as he kind of smiles, like, what bigly at you, you see those teeth, and you know in a heartbeat that's a British guy. Mm -hmm. Just kind of poke my head out and be like, hey there. <laughs> Oh, hello, chaps. I seem to have had a rather rough, rough go. <laughs> Jerry got the better of me on this one, I'm afraid. I see you yeah. having some transport issues. Oh, uh, yes. It uh, seemed like the uh, appropriate place to uh, put the old girl down for a nap. <laughs> Whoa. Well, he's... Good a place as any, I suppose. Kind of fumbles over and stands back up, trying to get the parachute off. Uh, Just cut the cords. Just cut the cords. Uh, oh, fine. Uh -huh. This seems a bit of waste. You could reuse these, you know. Yeah. There's more trouble than it's worth. Trust us. <laughs> Cutting himself free. Oh, heavens. Uh, Yanks, yeah? Yep. Yep. Yeah. Headed to the front lines. Need a ride? Hey, front lines is sort of rather the opposite direction. I was uh, rather hoping we'd be back in Africa in time for tea. I mean, you could walk, but you know, it's, it's up to you. Uh, fair point, I suppose. Um, I say, any of you happen to have a radio? Uh, uh, the Jeep has one, didn't, didn't it? No, these these Jeeps do not have these radios. GMCs, the GMC will not. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This uh, is back before every every car has a radio. Yeah. yeah. I'll just kind of shake my head. I don't have one either. Like, nope. Right, right. No, no, no radios and the lorry. I'm afraid that's uh, okay. Um, by chance, would your uh, commanders? They, they're bound to have a radio. Is that they the should. direction you're headed? We're headed to Ponte Olivo, so yeah, we just took it. Are you coming from Ponte Olivo? It's back that way a bit. Going to it. To Ponte. Oh, okay. Wait, I thought we had passed it, right? Yeah, because you guys are had been sent to meet up with everyone else. So you guys went south to Gela, and, right, and we're going back north, right? Pushed, uh, sorry, pushing west. Yeah. Oh, you're, okay. You're going to catch up with them. I thought they set up an FOB at, at Ponte Alivo. Never mind. But you can head to Ponte Alivo. Is that where you're headed? <laughs> Don't let me tell you wrong. <laughs> no. Where were, where are you guys headed? You tell me. You're the drivers. We're headed back to our FOB. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so if you're heading to Ponte, yeah, then it's a little bit. This would be the slightly more northerly course than the northwestern one. Uh, okay. Everything else that still happened, though. Uh, yes, Ponte. Um, Ponte Olivo. Sure. I'm, it's in friendly hands now, I hope. 
Yeah. Yeah. After a bit of blood and a bit of fight, but good to hear that. Those Jerry buggers put up a stiff resistance, but I dare say we put the head on them in a fair return. We made sure of that. <laughs> well, cheers to you then, boys. I uh, hope we were successful. We did run into a, a column of Jerry's uh, armor, big old fat panzers rolling their way down towards Gela. And then three of those too. You think we should uh, do this talking while we ride? We're kind of a easy target here. Oh, right. Sorry. Dreadfully sorry. Yes, of course. Uh, I'm Boomer, yeah. by the way. Oh, pleasure to meet you. Uh, uh, F Flight Sergeant Jones. Sergeant. Corporal Donalds, uh, call me Don Juan. Oh, uh, Don Juan, very Spanish of you. Que <laughs> uh, <te> bueno, <laughs> as the Spanish say. Um, right. <laughs> it's, it's I, I've always wanted to visit Spain. It's a bit of the hobby. Uh, hobby's not the right word. Um, a bucket list item, if you will. Um, and, and you, chap, uh, glasses? Oh, I'm still in the G2. Oh, you didn't even get out? Nah, I just pulled up. Okay. Uh, right, um, I will hop in the back. Cheers. Is he getting, in the, is he getting in the Jeep or the... I mean, like, there's, there's room in the GMC for three in the front. Or there's room for... I don't know how, how badly they filled up the Jeep, if they did. It's pretty filled. Uh, yeah. it's, it's fine. I'll, um, I'll stuff in with you chaps, if that's okay. Come on in. We're yeah, all friends fine. here. Cheers to that then. Uh, all aboard. I'll do gin. Lovely Lori, he says, it's kind of is in the process of climbing up into it. She gets the job done. She gets her done at the side. Uh, with Flight Sergeant Jones aboard now, uh, having been safely rescued from the Italian countryside, the engines fire back up. And all of you continue on with the drive, heading on to uh, Ponte Olivo, this airfield that you have just hard won. Um, dreadfully sorry, boys. Uh, do any of you happen to have um, smokes? Uh, yeah, I got you. I'll uh, light up two and pass them one. Uh, th thank you. I'll, I'll hand one of mine to Donaldson, but can you light this up for me? Gotcha. Pass it back. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, this is a uh, <coughs> American, right? Um, Virginia. Virginia. A little stronger than you're used to. Oh, a tad, I'm afraid. <laughs> Although I do yeah. fancy a, a good Turkish one when the mood strikes. Absolutely. Sure. Nice and smooth. Mm. That's right. That's Virginia tobacco. Virginia. Oh, lovely. Well, what's this uh, Virginia like? Lots of, lots of hills and trees. No, it's crops. I imagine some. Uh, it's, it's out in the uh, Appalachians, what I hear. Okay, that's um, is that a state? It's a mountain uh, range. Oh, mountains. Okay, right. Sorry. Yes. Uh, my knowledge of American geography is a bit sketch. That's okay. I'd be lost in Britain. Oh, don't worry. There's a fair amount of Britons that are lost there as well. <laughs> uh, and she kind of just enjoys the rest of this ride, chit-chatting with you guys. Um, thankful for the uh, commute. He uh, will whip out of his uh, side pocket in the leg portion of his uh, jumpsuit some very, very uh, stale crackers uh, that he's been keeping on him that miraculously survived the landing uh, kind of he explains it as the fact that he was he intentioned to land on his right side uh, to avoid breaking the crackers specifically uh, yeah. but he will distribute those amongst you oh much appreciated yeah, of course thank you <laughs> was, was I able to uh, to uh, find any booze when we were at the base? Uh, oh, down at the G1? Yeah. No. That place is uh -huh. drier Knocked than down. Prohibition, <laughs> Kentucky. <laughs> oh, wow. 
Uh, right. Unfortunately. Actually, I'm standing by for all the comments of oh, yep. Kentucky was the most <laughs> drunk place yeah. in the state. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, Prohibition, Rhode Island or something. I don't know. Yeah, Massachusetts, whatever. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Um, as you guys roll into uh, the edge of Ponte Olivo, you pass some of the burned out hulks of these Italian Fiat 3000 tanks that had been popped. Um, and you'd actually find yourself coming up this road uh, where you pass a Tiger tank that has had its turret blown off relatively recently. Uh, kind of a familiar scene for you guys. Uh, like we've come up against a couple of those. Not as much as, not as big as everyone says. Your boys helped us out in a pinch all of a sudden. We were <laughs> oh, facing yeah. down a couple of them and they just flew in. Some crazy idiot came straight down shooting at it. I don't know what the hell he was thinking, but... Uh. Oh, I know exactly who you're talking about. And, uh, yes, he's a bit daft, I'm afraid. <laughs> uh, absolute dead devil, that one, though. He was a um, bit of a barnstormer in the days before the war. Appreciate the help. Although, with my kill, I had it handled, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm sure you did, old chap. We're just trying to do our sporting part. We appreciate it. Well, of course, of course, of course. We appreciate our... You boys out here stalking it on the ground. It's, uh, you know, as they say back home, about time America showed up. We've been going through this for three bloody years so far. Uh, four, actually, come to think. Yeah, coming up on four years. Well, now that we're here, we'll cut it short. Don't worry. Yeah. It's I appreciate that. Now. Yeah, so uh, Jerry, I'm sure, is not a fan. But uh, frankly, who gives a damn? Amen. Amen. All you see up in the Jeep in front of you is basically me recounting the same story with like real exaggerated like hand signals to like all the dudes that are in the Jeep with me. <laughs> it's uh, it's basically just Becker because the whole back of the Jeep is filled with supplies. Uh, Jeep is normally only like a five seater, but that whole <laughs> back back row has been filled to the brink with ammo. Oh, with supplies and yeah. ammo, got you. Yeah, so uh, it's just but... me telling Becker about like the it's coming in straight down. <laughs> And I'm just thinking about that box of rockets sitting back there, like <laughs> very excitedly. He, see the uh, flight sergeant kind of like looking over at you guys and looking up at the jeep in front of you, uh, recounting the tale. I'm sure. Oh yeah, we've had oh, yeah, uh, sure. we've had some adventures. Private Becker kind of incredulously is just staring at you, Riles. Okay, I'm sorry. Are you telling me that? Uh, he was flew straight down and he was trying to shoot a tank with his machine guns and i'm sitting there and i'm like that's not even why are you focused on that part one dude came in like ground level and skipped he skipped a bomb off the dirt into the side of a tank well okay i mean that sort of makes sense right he's it's a fighter bomber he dropped a bomb while he was fighting the tank why would you shoot a machine gun at a tank who drops a bomb parallel a hundred foot off the ground? That, that's also a fair point. That's that's a fair point. Those guys are nuts. I would never want to be a pilot. That sounds terrifying. <laughs> I'm just glad they got there. Oh, yeah, me too. I mean, I'm thankful for them. Absolutely. I think the only person that didn't appreciate it was Boomer. Because <laughs> he didn't get to blow it up himself? 100%. <laughs> I heard he blew up like a uh, a plane or something or like a, a hangar. Oh yeah, no, we, we absolutely blew. It. He blew up a half track, and then, well, hangar first, then wait, half track, then hangar. But yeah, it was just explosions everywhere. That sounds like Boomer's Jam, honestly. And you know, they don't yeah, call it like rock. private private super chill Burke. <laughs> I don't think that I don't think there is a private super chill bark. I don't I don't I don't know about that guy. <laughs> I, I don't know either. That's uh seems par for the course though. Um as you guys kind of round the next corner, you can see the very, very badly damaged gate uh to the entry of Ponte Olivo. Uh handful of MPs that are in the process of dragging some bodies out and lining them up. Um there's a a row of bodies. 
on the right side. Um, and on the uh, left side, there is a pile of bodies. The uh, MPs kind of um, gesture for you to slow down a little bit um, as you are getting closer here. Slow down, stick my head out. Yeah. He uh, kind of looks over at you with a uh, kind of a curious look. Where are you? Uh, where are you guys coming from? Where are you headed? We went on a shopping trip. Oh, good! A smart ass. I love that. Makes my day great. Where are you? Hey, what do you think I'm from? doing? <laughs> from the G1. Okay, you got your your papers. Got identification. I just kind of give him a like a blank stare. Hey, like buddy. A, losing my patience, blank stare. Buddy, we've had several Germans try and infiltrate the base, and I'm not taking chances. Let's see who you are, and let's see you prove who you are. I sort of like lean over and kind of like hold up my shoulder, show the chevron. Just like, uh, excuse me, sir. Uh, we're here to drop off supply, uh, personnel and uh, munitions. Okay. Thank you for that. Corporal Donalds. He uh, takes a couple of more steps closer. Um, his M1 carbine is still slung over his back. Um, he uh, gets like right, right up next to the edge of the truck. You won't mind a... Uh, quick little test then, right? Make sure you guys really are Americans. Uh, sure. You're like, the fuck is this? 1940 like World place? Series, who won? I figure Boomer would know, but I do not. Uh, Cause... yeah, if you guys want... Yeah, can okay. we make, like, a yeah. history? Yeah, this'll be, uh... uh it's not a history, but let's oh, call yeah. that... Uh, Insight? Yeah, makes sure. as much sense as anything else. Yeah, let's make an insight check. Can I just say who gives a shit from the front of the jeep? From the jeep? <laughs> One success. And I got Riles a success too. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> both of you guys are, are more baseball fans than Riles, who only knows mm -hmm. football. Um, you guys both know that 1940 was the Cincinnati Reds. Yeah, those Never the Reds. went against the Reds. Yeah. All right. Move on through. Kind of hops down off of the truck. Gestures to the other ones to let you guys pass. You heard Keep me, driving. Bert. Uh, as you enter into the uh, airbase here, kind of pushing back through and uh, past him, he, uh, there's a hustle and bustle going on about the base right now. Um, as the... Uh, other soldiers that are here are kind of in the process of cleaning and picking up. Um, there's wounded casualty collection points where folks are being treated. Um, you can see one of those buildings that you had been uh, next to, uh, the one actually right next to where Private Corsetti had been killed. Um, there's somebody putting up a big uh, radio mast on the outside. Can I go? There's your radio. It'll be up in a bit. Oh. Splendid. Do you think I could um, uh, hop out here, chaps? Yeah, uh, you're on your own. No, I'll I'll take it. Uh, th thank you. I'm genuinely and um, I'll find my way from here, boys. Appreciate the ride. You take care of yourself Always. out there. Take care, Jones. You as well. Pleasure uh, seeing you. No offense. Hopefully, we never meet again. But uh, should you make it through the war, come out, come find me up in sunny England. Yes, Sergeant. Township of Bath. Look me up, everyone. Bath? Knows. Bath, you know, the, the thing you take when you're dirty. Bath, oh, okay. Yes, yes. Let's let him hop out. Okay. Uh, as he hops out. Um, Just wave at him, you know, as we drive off. He uh, kind of waves goodbye as you guys are kind of parked now. You can see Several of the folks here have uh, 82nd Airborne patches on their shoulder. 
I can tell you're probably in the right place. Good to be home. All right. Well, I'm just kind of we... real slowly figure out where where we should park. Yeah. See where they're where they're. Um, sorry, my brain's mush today. See where if I could see where they're doing requisitions and all that. Okay. Uh, make a perception check for me. You make this as well. Mm -hmm. One success and a bunch of ones. Okay. Same. That's that's good enough. Um, the person that you recognize out here is Sergeant Taylor. Um, he was formerly y'all squad leader um, before yep. he got bumped up to platoon sergeant. Um, He's in the process of directing a handful of these uh, privates with their rifles, um, getting them pointed in a certain direction. And you can see sort of like directing traffic flow here. Let's stick my head out. Hey, Sarge. So you boomer? Yes, sir. We got the goods. <laughs> got those yeah. groceries y'all wanted. Oh, hell yeah. All right. I'm going to tell the LT. Uh, park up right there. Here's this. We even got some hands to help unload it for you. Oh, even better. Just tell them to stay away from my box of rockets. <laughs> They're mine. I'm not going to touch them. Park it over <laughs> there. You. You're good to go. Corporal, see to it that they get unloaded. Once you guys are done with that, uh, I'll have the LT come out here and meet you. Thank you, Sergeant. Thank you. Yep, no worries. All right, move out. Kind of turns around Back. and heads off towards another tent. Back it in where he told me to put it. Okay. The uh, trucks are, are parked appropriately, and um, you guys can hear coming from the back of the seven ton with all the guys in it, just uh, this excited talk. Uh, just their entire mood is like peppy. I just kind of look at them like, these kids. <laughs> so, all right, privates, none of us can relax. So all this junk is off this truck. Let's do it. Yes, Corporal. Well, right You're away. Right the Corporal. I just lean against the truck. <laughs> <laughs> they kind of like bumble into each other and they're getting down from this high back seven ton. Um, start loading up some of this stuff. One of the, one of these guys uh, kind of looks over at you, Burke. So um, how long you been in the outfit? What's it been? It's been two, two years, right? A year and a half? Yeah, you guys have been in so probably since 40... 41 mm -hmm. you probably the 82nd was a reserve division uh, mm -hmm. before world war ii that actually got activated as a preparation just in case anything went happen uh when pearl harbor kicked they were like oh hey hey something happened guys. you guys were already trained infantry um so the process of getting you trained and qualified for airborne was your 1942 um mm -hmm. now the 1943s kicked off here you are in the war um, but you guys have probably been together since, for some of you that have like been in a little bit. Almost more, three years. Yeah. yeah. Almost yeah. three years. Three years. Have two years with the patch. Okay. Man, it's impressive. Uh, well, we've only, uh, only been in about six months. Just barely got our jump wings before we came out here. How many jumps you had? Oh, I've had three. Uh, the one going in was going to be my fourth, but that, you know, that jump that they had us do for all of the those locals in Tunisia. Hmm. Yeah. Sprained my ankle on the landing, on the size of a grapefruit, couldn't walk. Oof. It's tough luck. No mustard stain yet? Not yet. Give it time. Give it time. Uh, you just uh, uh, keep your head in a civil out here. No, I'll do. I'll do my best. Uh, the, what, what was your name again? You said Burke. Call Burke. me Boomer. Boomer, pleasure to make your acquaintance. Um, and you are. Oh, uh, I'm Private Anders. I'm a Anders. munitionsman. Nice to meet you. Yeah. Likewise. Uh, 
can see there's a uh, another fellow who's next to him uh, who's got a, a 30 cal kind of slung over his shoulder. You said your name was uh, Burke? Yep. That's a familiar name, but uh, I think I've known a couple of Burks in my day. Oh? <laughs> yeah. What parts are you from? Boston. It's gross. That's all right. I won't hold it against you. Name's uh, Jimenez, but all the guys call me Cricket. Nice to meet you, Cricket. Likewise, likewise. <laughs> What's up with the uh, the silent guy over there at the Jeep? That I look over at uh, at Riles. Oh, he's just avoiding work. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, oldest. I feel like my my jokey jovial mood probably changed when I started driving by the bodies. These guys mostly didn't see it because they were in the back. Hey, uh, you going to be okay there, Riles? You look a little, uh, a little dense. I just take like a drag off a cigarette and just give like a head nod. I'm like, yeah, I'm good. All right. <laughs> yeah, there's uh, Jimenez, by the way. Everybody calls me Cricket. You know, like... I look uh, at the gun, I'm like, uh, I can see why. Sorry, for a lot of you gringos, that's Jimenez, but uh, it's pronounced Jimenez. Jimenez got it. Yeah, Jimenez. just call me Cricket. Got it. Cricket is good. I, I like Cricket. Yeah, cricket. Uh, as he's kind of getting himself situated and unloading the ammo specifically, um, there's a, another fellow who kind of calls your eye because of the fact that his helmet has like a big uh, white circle with a uh, like a red plus shape in the middle of it, uh, indicating that he is a medic. Uh, it kind of comes up uh, by the rest of you guys. I got a, his hand full of uh, medical supplies, kind of a, a larger wooden crate. Welcome to the front lines, Doc. Appreciate it. Uh, name's Davis, but yeah, everybody calls me Doc. You guys, uh, sure work cut out for you. Oh, you better make my work easy for me. Oh, it's gonna, it's gonna be everything but easy. <laughs> well, I'm sure that'll probably be the case. All the same, nobody's allowed to die. You understand? You I like shot, that order. Patch up. I like that. You may even go home, but no one's allowed to die. So far, so Sounds good. good. <laughs> All right. Well, don't mind me. And he uh, walks by you guys with these medical supplies. The rest of them just kind of getting everything unloaded. Lieutenant Ellington is uh, in the process of walking up. Uh, he's got Sergeant Taylor at his side and a Italian local looks like um, older man, kind of a wispy mustache. The uh, black is very speckled with gray hairs. Uh, and he's kind of got one of those uh, flat caps, um, like Peaky, Peaky Blinder style. I don't know what that's actually called. Scully cap. Scully cap. Okay, yeah. So he's got the scully cap, uh, kind of his wispy mustache and a little vest over a uh, slightly worn kind of beige shirt. I'll uh, stop leaning on the truck and just kind of <laughs> kind of stand it parade. Uh, you see Lieutenant Ellington kind of like give you the raised <laughs> eyebrow, Burke, and he rolls his eyes. I just grin. <laughs> at ease, at ease, everybody at ease. Um, so we've got some word here. Welcome back, by the way. You guys got some good stuff? Oh, we got yep. the goods. Good. You got food? Chef? Uh, we definitely have rations. I'm not talking about rations, chef. Your order was to find me some good food. Yeah, we ate that. But We've been hunting Jerry, sir. Technically, we did find it, so order completed. Okay, well, I guess I'll be more specific next time. Find some good food and bring it back. Oh. Yeah, that would be a lot easier in, in actual, like, Italy. What do this I... Is like... This is Sicily. This is, yeah, this, this is where Italian food was born. <laughs> I mean, if we if we had five minutes without Jerry shooting at us, we could probably find you some food. I will give you five minutes if you guys can find me some food. Okay. I also got me a box of rockets, so I'm sure you're happy to hear that. You know, I actually, uh, he kind of like looks over his shoulder where the blown out half track is. 
I actually think that might not be a bad idea at this point. Yep, more than happy to do my part. Don't I mean, at least he knows how to use them. That's, I mean, I feel like it's, you know what? I'm glad you know how to use them, Private Burke. They uh, are in your capable hands. Yes, sir. All right. Uh, get these these new boots gathered around, Corporal. We'll um, we'll brief over there. The uh, tent with the big hole in the middle of the roof. That's ours. It's best I could do. Sorry, I would have had a hanger for you, but um, things got, got a little out of hand. Yeah. Word on the street is you blew up a hangar and a plane. And two Germans. Hey, don't forget the Germans that were in there. Yeah. Oh, that's not bad, honestly. A... They shouldn't right. be hiding behind oil barrels. With one, with one charge. Not bad. Not bad. There was still... a grenade. I, I, was, grenade. I was over on the other side. Oh, even yeah. better. Dang, all that with a grenade? Yes, sir. This is going to blow my mind, Private Burke. He kind of like walks over to you and puts a hand on your shoulder. I might actually have to write paperwork for you in a good way. In a good way? That happens? I didn't think it was possible. I, but, I, I uh, think it, hold, hold, hold up, Burke. I think he's trying to trick you. What, 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 what are you talking about? Uh, you know, the when you don't screw up they give you these shiny little things that they pin to your chest uh -huh. uh, yeah it makes all the ladies swoon i'll take some of those uh, we'll see kind of uh, sure. grins and uh walks over to the small tent that you guys have get all the uh new boots. help them unload you know round them up finish them up finish up the unload and round everyone up just be like, come on, come on, come on. Like rounding up like chickens or sheep or something. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, and while they're doing that, I'll like puff and like stomp my cigarette out and just like walk off and try to go find some like real food somewhere other than that one place that we found it. Okay. Um, make a uh, survival check for me. If you have any like feats or... Um, uh... Talents or specializations involved with finding food? You Not yet, but that. I do have high survival. There we go. I'll tell Donald, can we use a tank for hunting? Uh, three successes. Three successes, there it is. We can give it a shot. You Always want to drive one of those. And I might, I might do some cheeky stuff since we got those hot rations too and be like, oh, what can I do with this and find real food? Just to stretch it a little bit. Okay. Um, as you um, you're looking around here, trying to find where this good food is allegedly hiding, um, you find a building that has largely Italian writing on it. And it seems like it's been more or less overlooked. But you're not looking with your eyes. You're looking with your nose. And you smell the distinct scent of Italian herbs. Okay. Uh, you smell the kind of the sweet scent of uh, cheese from inside of this building from an open window that's located at the top. One story building. Yeah, I'm just going to kind of like look around, pop my way in. Take a quick look as you uh, enter inside. What you find is a officer's mess in pretty good shape. There is a variety of uh, herbs and seasonings that have been uh, kind of staged in here. You're familiar with the names, although it's in Italian. Most of them are pretty similar to uh, what you would see in the States. There are several crates of sausages. There's cans upon cans of different types of uh, vegetables and fruits. And there's also some bread that's only about a day or two old. 
any uh like bottles that I find that may have either like wine or oil or vinegar or something like that? You do indeed. You find uh, one bottle of vinegar, one of olive oil, uh, and you find one of cooking wine and five of a drinking wine. Um, okay. All of the drinking wine is a white wine. Cooking wines are red. Okay. Yeah, then I'll probably like, again, I'm assuming this is just a staging area. Like this is just a, like, it has the ingredients, but doesn't have like facilities. Oh, this, uh, this is the mess. This is where- Okay, um, so it does have it. Yeah, a portion of this has been set up as like a preparation station. Um, there's okay. a sink, there's a, a small oven. And uh, the other side of this officer's mess here has been lined with uh, all of the supplies. Okay, yeah, then I definitely, then I'll, again, begrudgingly be like, I better get a fucking medal for this. And just go in there and like whip up something probably like super simple. But because again, with me being from the South, and having very probably limited exposure to Italian food, it's probably going to be a little bit of trial and error with how some of this is going to turn out. But I'm going to give it my best crack. Just make a nice charcuterie board, man. <laughs> <laughs> you uh, you start gathering together ingredients you're familiar with first. Um, you do find various types of pasta in store. Um, you know what pasta is, and there's rice too. Um, so you're super adept with cooking with that. The is there sausage, flour? there is flour. It's what they were using to make the bread. Yeah. So I'll probably like again figure out something simple. I'm like, oh, Louisiana roots. I'm gonna make a roux into out of something, and I'll start flavoring this roux until it tastes good, and then probably cook the sausages, put that in there, and then do like a little bit of the like the fancy Italian restaurants you go to with the uh, olive oil and vinegar for bread, with like okay. some herbs in it. Make me a, let's call this a survival check. And I'll throw you an extra dice in here for your uh, Cajun roots. Roll for cooking. This is peak war stories. That is three Little things that matter. Okay. You whip up, uh, given the circumstances, a mighty fine roux indeed. Uh, the the seasonings that you use and the spices that you got available, it's a little bit spicier than you would intend it actually, but it hits perfectly. Uh, it's a taste of home and the smell is phenomenal, um, but it is leaking out that window and you hear the door starting to open slowly. I'm just gonna pull my gun out. <laughs> Uh, you see the uh, bald head of Private Becker kind of peeking in. Ooh, it smells heavenly. I just point my... <laughs> I just have my gun, like, at the ready. I'm like, Becker, get out. You could... Are you the one cooking all this? I wonder they call and you chef. I'll... And again, I won't, like, aim it, but, like, I'll put the gun in, like, more of a position. I'm like, Becker, get out. Make sure no one else comes to this door. All right, I'll make sure nobody comes in, but uh, you owe me one of those sausage links. I'll just like throw, I'll just throw like a piece of bread at him. I don't, bread? I mean, I'll take it, but I want a sausage link. All right, just make sure no one else comes over here. You got it. I don't need this entire airfield sliding up at this door. I will keep this room secure, but I need a sausage link. And I'll like run over and just like hand him one. Sweet. Puts it in his cargo pocket. All right. The way to do that, I'll rub his head real quick and then shut the door. I hate you guys. <laughs> he shuts it and kind of pulls a, uh, a chair and uh, sits down as your door is closing here. A couple seconds later go by as you're in the process of cooking. You hear a couple of people walking over. Hey, uh, what's that smell? Hey, uh, you seriously, you guys don't want any piece of this. It's uh, the Italian mess. Looks like they poisoned the whole thing. We're just burning it all. I mean, I know it smells good, but uh, honestly, there's poison in there. 
Don't get too close. I've been assigned to uh, keep it off guard. Uh, nobody's allowed in or out. You hear the guys? Oh man, it smells so good. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, boys. Uh, maybe go find some that's not poison elsewhere. And I'm just sitting in there, like I'm assuming I can hear this. Oh yeah. And I'm just like, damn it, Q, you are an idiot. As the uh, the route is completed, <laughs> you you find it. it it's, it's pushing nighttime now, um, and it's getting pretty dark. But it is complete and is ready to be brought back. Yeah. Uh, then, yeah, I will, like, peek my head out of the door and be like, hey, coast clear? Yeah, coast is clear. I'm like, all right, scout up ahead. Got it. He kind of has the rifle slung over his shoulder. Uh, he uh, is looking around and uh, kind of walks across the uh, the little driveway here where vehicles will normally transit. I uh, kind of at the edge of the building, peeking around. Yeah, and I'll come out like stealthily with my stuff and and just again like hamming it up. And make my way over to the tent with a hole in it. Make a, a infiltrate check with me, uh, with a minus one. So you are minus carrying... one for a minus one for gumbo. Minus yeah, minus one for gumbo. Rue, in this case, two, two successes. Okay, uh, Becker got one. You guys managed to make it all the way over to this tent with the uh, this pot of rue that is just hot and fresh. Donald's and Burke, you guys smell him before you see him. Burke, I yeah. just look around. <laughs> smell that? I do. Uh, Rouse came through. Is there, a, is there a table in there that hopefully has like papers and stuff that the LT has been looking at? Um, uh, there probably is. I mean, you don't know for sure because you haven't been in there yet. Yeah, if I barge in, I'm gonna figure out where the closest thing to where the LT's sitting, what looks like where he's working at. This will be kind of an ass, and like put the pot like right on top of like the middle of that desk. <laughs> As you you come into this larger tent, uh, most of the guys are kind of laid out on the ground, getting ready to sleep for the night. Um, the LT has literally the only um desk and chair in this entire tent uh, where he's got a little lamp with this red light um, and as you walk in and that smell starts to uh, permeate every single head pops up from their sleeping <laughs> positions and starts looking at you and I'm just looking I'm like get back don't look at me don't do anything just stay down Oh, it smells good, Chef. Come on, buddy. We can't eat until the LT says we eat. Ah, uh, sir, sir. I uh, see they kind of like a scramble to get up, and uh, there's a couple of them that kind of like make a berth around you to like prevent space. Um, Becker is sort of like leading the procession. Get back, get back, get back. You guys get back. I know you're hungry. You gotta wait your turn. LT eat just, first. Everyone knows that. I'll just saddle up behind Ryle. <laughs> Got Boomer on your six? Yeah, I'm just I'm saying I'm just saying I'm like Boomer, watch my flanks. I'm watching that whatever the hell you just cooked. The smell is it's just overpoweringly delicious in the moment. Uh, as you bring it over to the LT's desk, him seeing you uh, immediately starts clearing off the entire desk, uh, just pushing it to the side and getting out his mess tin. And uh, I'll look out, I'll set it down, and I'll, like, open the lid up and, like, waft it. And I'll just be like, we did a little bit of a a mix-up here. We got uh, some Cajun gumbo with a hint of Italy in it. <laughs> oh, man. That smells so good. I could kiss you, chef. I'll, nope. All right. You boys uh, line up. Rank order. I'll take first. <laughs> what are you complaining about, Corporal Donalds? You're fourth. 
I, I, I was sighing in relief. I said it's good to be good to be fourth. <laughs> Uh, Better than these K rats. Uh oh, I may have been kicked out. Can you guys still hear me? Yep. yep. I can hear you. Okay. Hold on. I gotta. I may have to log back in. Oh, I hope this doesn't mess up my recording. Still showing. We we'll just splice it. Yeah. It says you've been signed out because you're signed in on another device. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I still see it. Still says recording. Yeah, yeah, it still says recording for me too. Let's see. Okay, I'm gonna hit OK on this, and uh, hope that it doesn't kick me out. Can you guys still hear me? Yep, yep. You're good. Okay, let me try and log back in here. No worries. But I'm actually having uh, my wife cook some Cajun inspired uh, pasta with the uh, sausage. <laughs> nice. Yeah, one of my.